Um, the, the three things that I want to get across is Cisco Unified Computing System is much, much, much more than a server. Thank you, please join. <laughs> um, it's actually a system. It's a system that unifies virtualization, compute, network, and storage access. It's a system that simplifies operations, data center operations, by radically reducing the number of devices, consoles, modules that have to be purchased, secured, managed, powered, cooled, administered. And lastly, it's a system that um, amplifies IT's ability to respond to rapidly changing business requirements. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the innovations that we have brought into unified computing span from the server all the way up to the interconnect fabric. And all of those innovations are, there are designed to do a couple of things. Number one, optimize for virtualization. And number two, radically reduce total cost of ownership. The third thing is that you should walk away with today is that those total cost of ownership savings are actually real. We'll walk through a case study um, working from the server all the way out to scaled out infrastructure and the numbers are real. All right, it's not just a bunch of marketing hype. So let's get into it. What is unified computing? Again, it unifies virtualization, compute, storage, and network access to decrease total cost of ownership and increase IT agility. There starts out with two servers. We first initially uh, entered the market in March with a Blade environment and the full Blade architecture with two B-series servers, a B250 and a B200. Um, the B250 will actually drill in on it because it offers extended memory technology. We'll talk about that in a little bit. In last week, last Friday, we actually introduced C-series rack servers to our portfolio. Because the vast majority of data center environments actually, or, and workloads land on rack as opposed to blades. To try to talk our customers into blading everything to reduce total cost of ownership is in fact trying to ask them to defy gravity. Okay? So we've extended unified computing benefits to a rack-based form factor, and those rack servers can operate in a heterogeneous environment or a unified computing environment. So customers that are, want to buy rack and aren't necessarily ready for a unified computing environment can buy now, unify later, and move into a unified computing environment at their own pace. Up top here, we're actually talking about the five specific innovations and differentiation that's in unified computing, all based on industry standards. First is embedded in unified management. So in a, in a compute infrastructure today, from the server, in the chassis, there are tons of management modules, either fee-based or, or they're free, that all introduce security vulnerabilities, all need to be revved, all need to be managed to control and, de and orchestrate uh, the devices inside the environment. What we've done is abstracted that and unified it so that you can actually manage a system of 320 servers, up to 320 servers, through a single pane of glass. We've embedded role-based access control so you, that your server administrator can actually provision and or reprovision or manage those devices with policies that are set up by his, his or her storage counterpart or and his or her network counterpart so that you can establish more consistent infrastructure policies, whether they're powered cooling, networking, security, et cetera. Extended memory technology is the other thing we've done. Inside uh, industry standard uh, DDR3 memory, we've more than doubled the available memory in a two-socket system. The third thing is dynamic service profiles, dynamic provisioning with service profiles. So virtualization so far today, server virtualization, we've really abstracted out the OS and the application stack. But the identity of the server, the state of the server has largely stayed on it, whether it's your network addressing, your, your LAN and your SAN addressing, whether it's your firmware, your BIOS settings, whether it's your boot order. We've further abstracted or virtualized those aspects of the server so that they can move fluidly around in the environment and you can provision servers faster and or reprovision servers faster, decreasing spares, for example, for high availability and burst. Unified fabric, by adopting unified fabric and founding it on unified, or unified computing on unified fabric, it radically reduces the number of NICs, HBAs, ca cables, and interconnects. Whether you're powering them, whether you're managing them, whether you're procuring them, that causes additional complexity and unified fabric removes those. Lastly, optimization around virtualization, we have introduced the virtual interface card, which is a hardware instantiation of VNLink technologies. And what that does is, as a VM is moving from one physical host to another, it needs to take along its network policies, its network controls, its infrastructure policies with it. And what VNLink does is allow that VM to be moving from one physical host to another and carry along those policies with it. 
so that those virtual machines can actually be portable and mobile. Now, let's take a look at one of those first innovations, Cisco Extended Memory Technology. Now, up until Nehalem EX or Xeon 5500 in a two-socket system, your virtualization performance was really memory bound. I think it was 64 gig in a two-socket system was the maximum amount of memory you could have. Now with Xeon 5500, that's increased to 144 gig. And now the sweet spot of virtualization is no longer memory bound. It's, it's actually around 96 to 144 gig. But with Cisco Extended Memory Technology, we've increased the memory footprint substantially. Okay? So that we're actually seeing up to 384 gig in a single two-socket system, more than those costly, power-hungry four-socket systems see today. When you take a look at a 48 gigabyte uh, implementation, there's really no savings from a memory standpoint. But because we can use less expensive DIMMs in a 96 and 144 gig implementation, you see the cost of a 96 gig implementation in a standard Xeon 5500 system is about $20,000. For 144, it's 30,000. That's using those eight gig DIMMs. Well, by using four gig DIMMs, just more, less expensive DIMMs, you can decrease your total cost to only 8,000 for 144 gig. And you get additional scalability, all the way up to 384 gig of memory in a single two socket system. It's really incredible. How does, what does that mean from a total cost of ownership? Let's take it beyond just the component or the memory. Now let's move it to an actual server. 50% more memory for 17% less cost in a server. Incredible savings, because these servers, when you're virtualizing, they are getting expensive, okay? 17%, the first time you can actually get more for less. When you scale that out into, let's say, 150 servers or 120 servers, you get additional savings through all of the other innovations because you can put more VMs on a server that has more memory, therefore decreasing the number of servers you have, and those servers are actually less expensive. What does that look like? With a 96 gig configuration from currently shipping Xeon 5500 systems uh, from our competitors, uh, the average cost is around 29,000. For 144 gig, 39,000. You can see that we can actually decrease the cost of a higher, more rich memory configuration and give you that scalability and headroom for a total reduction at the server level. Now let's take advantage of that additional number of VMs that you can put on those servers and scale it out to a 150 server environment, but you can get actually better consolidation ratios. And when you take it into account all of those other innovations, they decrease the administration, it decreases your power and cooling, it decreases your space requirements. All of the management software that you have to buy, okay, actually is unified and embedded and comes installed with the system. Massive savings from a three year cost of about seven and a half million down to four million. Now that's an actual uh, rack configuration, the same applies to Blade. Actually, it gets a little bit more interesting because you get 50% more memory at 32% less cost. Okay? Then you start to scale it and you get incredible savings. If you're looking at 120 servers, consolidate 3 to 2, down to 80. You see substantial savings and you get additional savings in the, in the Blade environment because of all of those in-chassis switches. Let's call them what they are. They're in the chassis, they're switches. Those interconnects, if you're looking at a 160 server, blade server environment, a traditional legacy um, blade server environment from one of our competitors, you could have 10 chassis, all right, with probably three pairs of redundant inter interconnects. That adds up to 60 in-chassis switches that cost anywhere between five and $15,000. Look at the savings that you get by managing those, those same 160 servers and interconnecting them with two interconnects because the building block of a data center, of an Oracle implementation, is not 16 servers. We need to rethink scale. Fantastic savings. Again, hopefully you've gotten the three things across. UCS, Unified Computing, is much, much more than a server. It's a system. It unifies compute, network access, network access, uh, storage access, and uh, virtualization into a single whole that can be managed and scaled uh, to decrease total cost of ownership and increase IT agility. Second, the innovations that we have put in there span from the server all the way to the entire environment, all within industry standards, and they're all designed to do two things. Decrease your total cost of ownership, increase business agility. agility. And lastly, the savings are real. These are real numbers, these are real prices. Encourage you all to come by our booth and we'll talk about uh, uh, your specific environment, and we can actually plug it into a TCO calculator.